would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no censors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much. A couple of months ago, an article came out that confirmed everything that we have been alleging about Antarctica and these domes of ice. The idea that there could be a civilization living under the ice in Antarctica that's either A, being hidden from us, by the powers that be, or B, still wants nothing to do with modern civilization. I could probably make arguments for both. Now, the reason I didn't cover it two months ago when this came out was because another channel I have a great deal of respect for, Atlantean Gardens, Robert Supper, last name spelled S-E-P-E-H-R, picked up the story and did a video on it. So I just wanted to give a couple of months so that I didn't walk on his coverage, so to speak. But the information is incredible. And it also shows something that makes what we've alleged almost 100% bulletproof. These Ukrainian researchers went to a place called Galindis Island. It's this tiny little island up on the peninsula of Antarctica. And I'll zoom in here real quick for you guys. It's way, way up here. It's this tiny little island. Now, here you can barely make it out. But what they found, cavern with a dome 500 meters high, three lakes, a river, 200 meters of walkway, and most importantly, they found the feather of a bird frozen in ice that was not a penguin. Now, they have sent that for testing, but it proves in theory it could be very possible that a civilization is existing out of the eye, so to speak, of modern man. Now, the level of advancement what they have, who they are, how they got there, who their descendants are, all that is something that we would need to have relations with this civilization to find out. I don't blame them one bit for not wanting anything to do with the modern, um, I don't even know what the word is, tyranny that goes on right now in this in the world as we know it. I mean... The idea of exploration for its own sake anymore is almost dead. Now, very strangely, I want to show something going on at Galindis Island back in 2004 that is just a curiosity, but I do have an entire region that I had investigated that I completely forgot about that I want to show you too. But back in the 2004 layer, January 25th, 2004 to be exact. Here, at the mouth of this opening, this river, there is this very strange thing that's throwing a wake. Now, could it be a boat? Maybe it could be a boat. It's the weirdest shaped boat I've ever seen in my life. 
the vast majority of boats in the world are much longer than they are wide, this would be a boat that is wider than it is long. And it is throwing a wake. It's very, very strange. Now, also nearby, let me see if I can find the right layer. It's definitely not that one for sure. There's another boat, and... Well, it looks like it's disappeared. Let me see if I can zoom in and find it. It's very difficult to see. It's a very large boat, which is kind of strange. But it has another... Oh, here it is. I found it. Now, it's very likely that this here is just another boat that they've just recently launched, and this is just its wake. But what I find curious is here. I mean, unless they launched a Zodiac that's just circling in the region, this is a lot of activity for 2004, given that they didn't discover what they discovered until 2018, 19. It means they might know some things that they or they have known some things for quite a while that they haven't been sharing. Now, something else real quick I wanted to show. To me, to my mind, the evidence of civilization will be things like this. See, this isn't something the satellite was supposed to pick up. These constructed channels. If there were going to be a civilization, they would have needed to have trade. And if they had trade they would need to have deep water ports. This looks exactly like some type of a construct of a deep water port. And for those of you thinking, oh, that's just what the icebreakers did, no chance. No chance, and I'll tell you why. First of all, I won't have to tell you why, I'll show you why. This channel, from its opening to the end here, is almost 40 kilometers long. And that's not the most important part. It's almost three-quarters of a mile wide. Cutting open a three-quarter of a mile wide channel. This is this little channel right here. Not the big one. This little one. Cutting that open, and to the extent that a satellite could pick it up, and creating it in this kind of a shape, that is far beyond far beyond the ability of any... We would have to take every modern icebreaker in the world and have them attempt to do this. To create this. This is evidence of an ancient port. And we've shown this in other areas. I have avoided the uh, peninsula like the plague because there's just so much human activity that it's hard to say anything we would find would be for sure that it would be evidence of an ancient civilization. This, however, there's no way. In fact, I'll go ahead and measure this for you at the widest point here. It is in kilometers. Oops, hold on. There we go. In kilometers, it is about five kilometers wide. For those of you here in the US, that makes it about three and a half miles wide, meaning almost horizon. If you were here, standing here on this edge of the opening, three miles is pretty close to horizon. That's how big this is. this would have taken an enormous, enormous effort. So, anyway, but without delay, um, another region completely all the way down at the 6 o'clock area that I found. This is an area, this is a year, this is 2011. I know a lot of this is melt, but this doesn't look like it. I'm not sure what this is, 
but there's something very strange going on right here. And I don't have a good name for it, but this almost looks alive. Now, that's not the most curious thing. What would make this? This perfect circle. With something very strange in the middle of it. And just to give you an idea of where this is and what this is, it's off the coast here. And there's this very strange, and it happens over and over again, these pools of what science likes to say is um, iron oxide. Guys, that ain't iron oxide. There ain't no way. It's just not the case. It's too bright red. Iron oxide is more like a, a burnt brownish red. But the one thing I'm going to leave you with is going to completely freak you out. And that's why I saved it for the end of the video. All right, I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to ask you what you see. I mean, I know what I see. I've seen the all seeing eye of Horus many times. And I don't know how you explain that image, especially given that it's in this perfect diamond. This looks like it could have been lifted right off U.S. money. So I guess I'll just leave it there and let you guys take a look at it. Like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Would like to pick up where we left off yesterday. At the end of the video, I showed this image, and many people were more impressed by it than the original topic of the video, that this looks so much like some type of ancient city or cityscape skyline, I don't think is any accident. Especially, not so much even the larger square images, but you would have to ask yourself a question about these very, very skinny images. What could possibly be that tall, that skinny, and have survived in Antarctica? What, what process, what natural process would have created that? It's an area that's allegedly, according to science, just windblown ice, rock, and snow. I've never seen ice, rock, and snow cut itself into squares before, or spires before. And the, the odd thing about this is what 15th century map makers were showing. Now, I know these days, with the advent of modern technology, wasting ink is not a big deal, but back then, Creating maps was an enormous, enormous undertaking. Just getting the right parchment and getting all of these different colors of ink, you didn't waste um, the space on the map. I mean, I know they created paintings of all sorts of different things, but maps were very different. They were the intelligence reports of their day. I've said that before. In this particular map, it shows very clearly on two different occasions, castles. Now this particular map is labeled Terre Brazil. Now, Brazil was kind of a generalized term back then. For example, Florida, La Florida, prior to the arrival of the English, everything from Nova Scotia around the tip of the Keys in Florida, all the way over to the Gulf where Louisiana is, was referred to as La Florida for hundreds of years by the Spanish. It was claimed by the Spanish, and, you know, it was actually changed hands. Um, this particular region I live in was the kind of epicenter of the feud between the Spanish and the French. Now, I've looked 
I have looked and looked, and there are some castles in Brazil, but they were built in the 20th century. They were built 1910, 1915. There's no way these buildings are these. So what in the world were these map makers talking about? I really honestly believe they were talking about what we know today to be modern Antarctica, and it was a very different place at the time. And it had buildings, and it had constructs. And speaking of that, I would like to show you guys something else that I found that I think you're going to think is very curious. Now, this is the Colossus of Rhodes. It was a statue that was built, an enormous creation, 108 feet tall, made of bronze when it collapsed in 226 BC. It took, I think the description was 900 camels to haul away the remains. It was an amazing, amazing structure for its time at one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Now, back here in Antarctica, we look and we see all of this um, imagery. And I've shown this in many different places. There's one specific one that it's much more um, defined, and I wish I would have brought that uh, particular location to where I could see it, but I'm not going to waste your time looking for it, but it's been in other videos. But let me show you something very strange. Now, it's curious, but it looks very much like the statue of the Colossus of Rhodes. You can see one giant leg here, something being held, kind of a shield here, maybe a staff. You can see the head here. And here's the killer part about this. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get out the, the measurement tool and show you how big this is in meters. Start here at the top and go all the way down to the bottom. And it is dead on dead on almost the same size as the Colossus of Rhodes 33 meters 108 feet now I'm not saying this is the ancient Colossus of Rhodes but if there was one civilization back then that could do it why wouldn't there be another I don't really have any other explanation for this to be very truthful this image but I will say one thing about when you're looking at Google Earth Pro if you find a region that shows up in high resolution when you zoom in if you go up here and in the upper left I have it on the screen there's a, a little box you can click it looks like a clock with an arrow that goes backward that's the the historical imagery box you click it and this time slider shows up if you get to an area and you see multiple images within like a year, like for example, this area only has one image from 2012, the next one prior goes all the way back to 99. There are other areas where they have imaged it two and three, sometimes four times in high res in the same year. When you find one of those areas, keep looking. Keep looking because you will find all sorts of amazing things. And that's what I'm going to leave with today is one of those regions and I've labeled this area blast site now I know that sounds like a very strange thing to label something but I want you to look very closely at this piece of ice down here this this rock it's the size of a house I won't measure it here for you because I've already done it 35 feet long 25 feet wide and 10 feet tall now where it came from is this giant open square here now the image that you're looking at right now is from 1220 of 2012. This is like day before, remember 2012, the Mayan apocalypse, all that? Okay, now we're going to go back to just October of that year. Let me get this out of the way. Here's what the image looked like. This same region, October 7th, 2012. They re-imaged it in high res only two months later. And look,
something exploded out of the side of this mountain and it sent a house size chunk in the shape of a square a good long distance you know what I will measure that distance because I haven't done that distance wise in feet 450 feet 138 meters now this isn't a collapse this this is a blast there's no way this there would be a lot more stuff between this and this if it were just a collapse something exploded off the side of this mountain and there's this very curious image here I'm not sure exactly what it is but you can look at this region in the previous years this is 12 20 2012 this of course is 10 7 2012 this is 2 28 2010 and we don't see any thing out of the ordinary until the day before December 21st 2012 when all of a sudden all hell breaks loose now what happened who knows could be a lot of things but this entire region right here and I'll give you the location of course down in the description I always do um, and you can look at this for yourself there's one other thing that I wanted to show and I'll talk more about it tomorrow because it's too hard to explain and it's very difficult to show those of you out in my audience who are familiar with Ezekiel from the Bible he spoke of a wheel within a wheel a vision now it's been interpreted a lot of different ways but I found something very very strange and it is so hard to show I'm gonna try to show this but it is a wheel and then there is another small wheel within it and there are four spokes now those of you familiar with Bible prophecy and the stories of the Old Testament will know exactly what this is now I can never say anything for sure but I find this very very odd and I'm gonna zoom in as close as I can here it's very difficult to get the resolution on this right I'll turn down the light as much as I can but it is a dead ringer for the wheel within a wheel and I guess I'll just leave it there like share subscribe would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable, First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no sensors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. Would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube please if you have the ability would love to have you over there you won't regret it God bless all of you and thank you so much